Have you ever wondered if you're doing the right thing when making a QSO? Or just simply need a refresher on the basics? When you're making a QSO, there are some general rules you should always follow. That's why today, we're gonna share our do's and don'ts every amateur radio operator needs to know when they're on the air. Do be friendly and respectful, and don't break into ongoing transmission. To a lot of hams, and especially us here at BridgeCom Systems, radio is a place where we can go and have cheerful conversations with one of our friends, or even make a new friend. Anyone transmitting deserves to be respected when making a call, and if the experience for those transmitting begins to be more painful than it is fun, the bands will be dead in no time. That's why it's important to always carry yourself with a friendly demeanor and respectful tone. If you're always trying to break into other hams' transmissions or offering nothing positive to say, you're going to create a lot of hassle for everyone involved. Do congratulate those who get their license and don't transmit without a valid license. You're on amateur radio because you worked hard to get your license and everyone transmitting likely has too. It can take a lot of studying to finally get your license, so be sure to always congratulate those new hams who just got theirs. With that being said, if you're planning to transmit, be sure to have a valid license. Licenses are necessary because it helps the communication regulatory body of FCC to monitor these bands. This monitoring ensures you don't use other frequency bands that are not available to your radio. If you'd like to learn more about studying and testing for your radio license, we've shared a link down below. Do speak clearly to others when transmitting. Don't forget to give your call sign. Ham radio as a hobby is an incredibly chatty place, but that doesn't mean you should get in the practice of talking too fast. If you want fellow users to understand you, you need to keep your words clear and concise. This practice will make transmitting more efficient, improving the experience of everyone involved. Most importantly, when you're transmitting, you clearly state your call sign. Contacts will likely want to know your name, but your call sign is a must. If you're not identifying who you are, it's considered an illegal unidentified transmit. To avoid this, you must identify yourself every 10 minutes of communication. But if you're not making a call for longer than 10 minutes, then be sure to do it at the end of the call. Do keep a call log and don't forget to send a QSL card. The practice of keeping call logs can often feel time consuming and inconvenient, but it's important for several reasons. These reasons include legal, record keeping, and QSL cards. Although legal troubles are probably of little concern for many of you, and likely you'll never have to deal with the FCC, a call log will help you prove yourself innocent of any interference complaints. Secondly, it will allow you to keep a history of your transmits so you can go back to remember the past calls you've had. And most importantly, a call log will enable you to successfully send a QSL card to your fellow hams. A QSL card is a written or electronic confirmation of a transmission between two radio operators. QSL is a telegrapher's shorthand for I acknowledge receipt of your message or transmission. It's essentially the final handshake between the two operators. Your card can include an array of information, but it should always have your call sign, location, time and date, frequency, mode, and signal report. Cards can even be made with all kinds of creative designs and colors to show a little of your personality. Overall, QSO cards are a long tradition in ham radio, and they're just a fun way to send something more personal to a fellow ham to remember your call. Do become more proficient in the phonetic alphabet and don't waste airtime. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo. These are examples of the phonetic alphabet. There are several reasons you need to know these words. For one, you're going to have to identify yourself as well as your fellow transmitters. However, the main reason why you need to know your phonetic alphabet is because it's easier to understand these unique sounds under rough conditions. Whether it's static or just a lot of background noise, understanding this alphabet will help you hear more clearly and not waste airtime. Not wasting airtime brings us back to what we said earlier about being friendly and speaking clearly. There's a good chance when you're transmitting, there are many hams listening in, so be sure what you're sharing doesn't ruin the experience for them. The objective of what you're transmitting should bring better conversation to the hobby and not take away from it. Ultimately, it's important to transmit something that's contributing to the enjoyment and fun of amateur radio. There you have it. These are the do's and don'ts for operating an amateur radio. If you'd like to learn how to get your ham radio license, click the link below. We'll walk you through the entire process from how to study to where to get your license. Thanks again for watching and as always, 7-3.